Coming in as the most graded card in the entire set. Number 250 of 250 and the most common Hall of Famer. Welcome back to my channel. My name is Chris, otherwise known on X and Instagram and now on TikTok as at CRT underscore sports cards. But here on my YouTube channel, I talk specifically around the Polar Bear Back cards from the T206 set. Some, myself included, consider it the greatest baseball card set ever released between 1909 and 1911. So if you are brand new to T206 or just wanna learn more about the Polar Bear Back cards from that set, Hit that subscribe button so you're notified the minute I release a brand new video. Let's jump right into it today. And as you saw by the title of the video, we're going to dive a little bit deeper into the Hall of Famers, looking specifically here at the five most commonly graded Hall of Famers from an SGC perspective. And on the flip side, we'll look at the five cards of the 32 that have been graded the least by SGC. And I'll tell you, there's a disparity between the top and the lowest graded cards. Now you may ask yourself, why am I using SGC versus PSA? When if you look at the raw numbers, PSA is graded nearly 2,000 more polar bears. Now, what you can't tell there is how many cards have been crossed over, but from a collectability perspective, and especially as a pre-war collector myself, I prefer SGC, and I still believe SGC reigns supreme in all of the pre-war community. PSA though does have the edge because of the registry. That is second to none, the coolest thing out there in the hobby. So maybe SGC will have that in the near future, but for this exercise, we're gonna use SGC specifically, and as it currently stands, they have graded just under 9,000 polar bears. Now here's a fun little comparison for you when it comes to pre-war grading versus the modern card grading game that a lot of people are playing these days. When you add up every single polar bear that's been graded by SGC and PSA combined, you come out to just under 20,000 copies graded at this exact moment. When you pick, let's just pick one specific card here from the recent release, 2018 Topps Update Series US 250 Acuna Junior Rookie Card. PSA, and now this is just PSA, they have graded over 35,000 copies of that card. Now, that number in and of itself is not very surprising, but what's surprising here is when you look at just PSA 10s, there were over 22,000, nearly 23,000 uh, PSA 10s of that card. There were more PSA 10 Acuna Juniors from five years ago than there are graded in the entirety of the Polar Bear set that is 115 years old. So it's just fun to look at from the perspective of what the modern card grading game is like versus what pre-war grading is. And that brings up a really good point around this video. This is what I'm going to call a marker video. I track every single month what it looks like on the PSA SGC side when it comes to additions to their overall population report. But every few months, probably every three months, I'm gonna do a new update video to kind of talk about where the trends have been at over the past few months, if we've seen any kind of oddities come across, if someone maybe who's hoarding a player has graded 10 to 15 copies. But every three months, I'm just going to release a new video looking specifically at the population reports on SGC and then including a little bit of PSA. But I will tell you, if there is a demand for PSA information, I will absolutely deliver it. Just leave me a comment below and I'll definitely dive into the PSA along with SGC. But without further ado, let's take a look at the highest graded cards in a SGC form from a Hall of Fame perspective. But when we talked about the overall population of the SGC, we had 8.9K. When you look at Hall of Famers, there were just over 2.6K graded for SGC. But let's get to that top five list right now. Coming in as the most graded card in the entire set, number 250 of 250, and the most common Hall of Famer with 269 copies graded, Nothing greater, though, than a 6.0 from SGC. It is Ty Cobb, Red Portrait. Coming in in the 31st spot when it comes to all of the Hall of Famers with 157 copies graded. Look at the disparity, though, between this card 
and the Ty Cobb at 269. And again here, nothing greater than an SGC 6.0. We have my personal favorite, Frank Chance Yellow Portrait. Coming in in the third spot with 154 copies graded. But on this one, nothing greater than an SGC 5.5. We have Ty Cobb's second card in the Polar Bear subset. That is the Bat Off Shoulder. Coming in now in the second spot, card number 246 out of 250 in the entire set with 150 copies. This card also has the greatest or the highest graded SGC card at a 7.0, but it is none other than Christy Mathewson. And then rounding out this top five list for most common Hall of Famers with a polar bear back, we have with 139 copies graded. Nothing greater though than a SGC 5.0. The cool thing here is there are three different fives in an SGC, we have Walter Johnson. So looking back at those top five cards, no real surprises. We figured we'd see Ty Cobb, Walter Johnson, Chrissy Mathewson, all those players right there at the very top. But when you look at those five cards together, those cards from an SGC perspective make up 33% of the 2.6K graded Hall of Famers that are currently out there right now. So the good thing is, is when you're out there shopping for these players, you can be picky. There are going to be multiple different variations of an SGC 1 or a 1.5 or a 2 or a 3. You're going to be able to be pickier than you will be on these next five players because some of these players have very few graded copies. And when you combine them as a whole, these five players make up just over 6% of the entire SGC current population. Coming in in the fifth spot, which is also the 175th out of 250 ranked card in the entire set, we have Hugh Duffy with just 35 graded copies in existence at the current time. From a highest grade perspective, there are two SGC 5.0s. There is a 4.5, there is a 4, but a majority of the graded cards are gonna be SGC 3. There are nine current copies out there at this exact moment. Coming into the fourth spot with just 34 copies graded, we have John McGraw, glove at hip. From an SGC perspective, there is a 6.0 out there, but then the most common graded card out there, or the most common number, there are seven 4.0. So if you're in the hunt for McGraw, from a high grade perspective, that six will be nice, but man, pick up one of those fours because there are a lot to pick from. Now for the bottom three, the three rarest Hall of Famers at this exact moment, or as of April 1st, which is when I created the stats for this video. And look, all three of these players are tied with the exact same number, but for a few of you who watched the first couple of videos, some of the notes I said earlier are gonna make a lot of sense right now. Number one, and these are in no particular order, but we have Zach Wheat. There are only 27 copies graded of that Zach Wheat card, and that's a card I called out. If you were building Hall of Famers today, I would get that as soon as you can, just because they are harder to come by. But from a numerical grade perspective, the highest graded Zach Wheat right now is an SGC 5.5. From there, it drops to a four, but then the most prominent number at this exact time in high grade is going to be there are 10 SGC 3s out there for Zach Wheat. Moving on from there, also with 27 copies graded, we have Joe Tinker bat on shoulder comparative to the bat off shoulder variation that he also has in the polar bear set. But from a numerical grade perspective, there is an SGC 5.0. There is also a 4.5 but from a, a most common number out there in high grade, there are four SGC fours at this moment. And then closing out this list of the five rarest Hall of Famers right now, we have none other than another Chicago Cub, but this time it is Frank Chance batting with just 27 copies graded. It is interesting to see how his portrait card is the second highest graded card, yet his batting variation is tied for the lowest amount of graded cards out there from an SGC perspective. Now, from a numerical perspective, there is an SGC 5 out there, only one copy exists, but there are though now 
five SGC fours out there. So if you're looking for a high grade chance and you can't obviously lock down that five or if it never comes up for sale, keep your eye open for that four because there are five different copies out there. And I'm sure there are five very different fours out there based on when the cards are graded. And I say that because while I do enjoy having some of the older SGC flips in my collection, what you see that graded a four many, many years ago compared to what a four is now, or even a three or a two, they're very, very different. So don't just buy the card because it has a four or a three on the label. Take a look at the card, make sure the image is crisp, make sure the corners are how you want it to be. Don't just buy the card for the grade because the grade's a small part of the card. The most important part is owning the card. And if you wanna learn more about T206, hit that subscribe button.